from your letters, it seems to me there's a lot of long range uh, hunting going on. And I started to take more of an interest in some of the cartridges that uh, were not so new and some that were very new. Uh, a friend of mine was telling me about the 6.8 Western, which I think is a 270. Um, as you may remember, I have a 6.8 SPC, one of my favorite, uh, not long range cartridges. But I thought we should look at the 8mm Remington Magnum and you'll see some footage um, with these actual rifles in the mountains. Uh, we'll also look at a recoil reduction system, which is uh, was to me a revelation. Maybe it's old hat to you. Uh, anyway, I thought best is to show you the cartridge. So first off, um, ironically, the 8mm Remington Magnum has been around a long time. And it's one of those cartridges I overlooked, but uh, lately I think it's actually one of the best long range cartridges. A lot of people compare, uh, rightfully compare, cartridges like the 300 Weatherby Magnum to the 8mm Remington Magnum and you know every which way to Sunday, 338 Win Mag, 300 Win Mag. Um, anyway, I put some on the glass here so we've got on this side we've got the 3030 Winchester totally out of place but it gives you a sense of scale and there are a lot of people who watch my channel uh, for the first time and they're in places where they can't own any of this and they don't they've never heard of any of this this is a 50 BMG uh, sort of the ultimate problem solver this is the subject of the video 8 millimeter um, Remington Magnum and this is actually the seven millimeter shooting times westerner which is based ironically on the eight millimeter remington magnum neck down to seven millimeter but i had to work with seven millimeter shooting times westerner stw uh, because i couldn't find any eight millimeter remington magnum so actually uh this is the post-operative 7 millimeter STW with 8 millimeter uh, 180 grain and then 300 win mag you probably recognize it because of the short neck this one you may or may not be familiar with 8 by 68 S uh, more common in Europe and then 30 out 6 I put that there just as a kind of standby so um, yeah and I glued these on so you know it's easier just to move them around anyhow uh, you can see that the 8mm Remington Magnum needs a long action, so um, how did it work out? I forget which one of these I I bought first. Anyway, um, this is the standard rifle, and this is, you know, before um, Remington was purchased by a hedge fund, or, I, you know, I don't know, the whole corporate intrigue thing, uh, but it's very well made, um, both of these rifles. Uh, since we were in the mountains, um, we took to a regular range. And um, they're both minute of angle, which isn't surprising. Most modern rifles are minute of angle. Uh, maybe some of you will disagree, and that's always good. Um, but, you know, barrel making technology is well established. 8mm Remington Magnum. And it needs the long action because of the size of the cartridge. And so people ask me, well, why do you like it? Well, because of all these letters about long range hunting. And I understand what you've written. I made a list actually of letters I had received with first names or web names. And um, the, the people were pointing out they go out hunting once. Um, they, you know, they have an opportunity at four or five, six hundred yards. And they know they won't get out again. So they have to have something that has that capability i understand that um i i've been spoiled with you know hunting where uh, 200 yards is a long shot uh, anyway i'll show you the barrel marking in a minute what i like about that eight millimeter Remington magnum is the size of the cartridge um, i've always felt the opposite that where manufacturers have been trying to shrink cartridges make smaller cartridges do what the bigger cartridges always did. 
by increasing pressure, I don't see the need. And the longer cartridge has always fed, in my opinion, better or more easily. Uh, not that the short ones don't, uh, although some people write me letters to the contrary. In any event, um, long action, 700 BDL. I'll flip it around and I'll move those cartridges aside so that you can then see the barrel marking. Uh, these, these rifles are around. Uh, people seem to, first of all, not shoot them because the ammo is hard to find. And there may be some, you know, boutique manufacturers, uh, but there's always a way. Um, as as I mentioned, you can you can you can get these things running again. Anyway, I thought this one was in beautiful condition, and uh, yeah, so I fired this one, and it's got some kind of recoil, but they all do. Uh, you can't escape recoil. Well, with a muzzle brake, you can get some relief from perceived recoil. It's true, uh, but a great round. People will ask the ballistics, so. Uh, my friend says he reloads 180 grain to 3,400 feet per second. Uh, some of you might feel that's on the ragged edge of uh, doability, if that's a word. <laughs> I don't know. Um, but he seems to do that routinely and has no problem, no indications of excess pressure. Uh, so I tend to believe him. Anyway, um, this is the second one, but before I do that, I'll talk about this 8x68S. So this is this is this is the pre-operative round um, for the 8mm Remington Magnum, and this is the European 8x68S. And on the flap um, of this ammo, quite usefully, uh, they show the ballistics, which maybe is a good idea for everybody to do. And it shows a 180 grain bullet at 3,250 feet per second. So it's uh, significant. I like the frontal area of eight millimeter and I always have. I think the, of course, ballistic coefficient for the longer, thinner bullets is an advantage, but I think frontal area means something. And it allows you to get to um, heavier weights without going to extremes. You know, you could theoretically have a 220 grain, 6.5 millimeter um, cartridge, but to stabilize that, uh, you'd have to have some kind of really rakish um, rate of twist. But anyway, you generally know more than I do about all that. I just mention it um, as part of my thinking. I think the eight millimeter is very balanced it's ideal the pressure seems to be routine for it it handles an excellent range of bullets 180 to 220 effortlessly and uh, yeah there's just, just something about the eight millimeter caliber that for me i've always liked uh, now i'll get to the second thing which you'll see on the video in the mountains and that is this is the second one i i bought um, 8mm Remington Magnum. And as I mentioned to the, uh, this, this was all discussed on Patreon and was quite popular, so I thought I should make a, another video. Um, I, you know, if you own one, as I said already, you may as well own two. So this is the second one, and this one came with this Magna porting. I'm gonna try to balance this and get it steady for you in case you haven't seen this. So what they did is, is they use a system, I believe it's called EDM. Uh, that stands for something like electron discharge machining. So I'm assuming there's an electrode inside the bore and then another one on the outside and the steel is bombarded to make these incredibly precise, you know, surgical precision cuts. And you can see the ones that are on the front sight, like left and right. So that prevents muzzle lift. And as you'll see in the video, I couldn't believe how effective this is. And then the cuts left and right um, get just get rid of gas so that there's less perceived recoil. Highly effective. I'd rather have this than all those threads and, and those quite often bulky. And I, I've had a lot of rifles just uh, as you have with those 
with those muzzle brakes and spiral holes and all kinds of configurations. So I had one rifle that looked like a Panzer tank, you know, this kind of thing hanging off the end. But this is elegant, simple, uh, works amazingly well. And somebody was telling me that, you know, the, the more gas you push through those vents, the more effective it becomes. So, yeah, this is the other 700. I try to show you the rifles because usually the people say, I don't do that enough. So this one, you know, I wish I knew those Remington codes by heart, but I think this one was made in, I just looked, I think it was made in 1980. So it's not, you know, it wasn't made yesterday, but some better grade of wood for sure than the other one. And somebody went to the trouble of putting the Magna porting. And there's some hunting wear on this, which I always think in a way improves the <laughs> looks of the gun. Maybe not everybody agrees. Action, very slick. This was uh, when Remington used, you know, whatever steel they used or manufacturing system. It's beautifully slick action. And nobody can really argue uh, with the Remington 700, although uh, many people do write me about trigger issues and so forth. I've been lucky. I never had uh, any problem. Um, but anyway, that's another subject. All right, well, that's probably um, uh, all I really had to say. You'll see the actual shooting in the mountains. And it's, I think, a cartridge, especially these days with this focus on long range, um, not to be um, overlooked. And maybe they'll start cranking out ammunition. I don't know. There are all kinds of choices, but I like the size of that brass and the caliber is excellent. And as I mentioned on the Patreon video, um, a friend of mine made one of the longest shots ever on a goat uh, with the actually 8x68S, which is almost the same as the Remington 8mm Remington Magnum. But again, I like the, the case size because you can get pressure slightly lower with the larger case size um, as the Fellows from South Africa write me, they like the 416 Rigby because the case is so big. Anyway, that's about it. So we'll see you on the next video and thanks for watching. This is a Remington 700 BDL in the much neglected eight millimeter Remington Magnum. I bought this rifle on a Lark and found it to be excellent and the cartridge as well. It's very difficult finding ammunition for it um, you know, it'll be quite familiar to you, and I think we've probably used a few 700 BDLs on the channel. But what I did is I, I made a video on Patreon that people found quite interesting, just because it's such an unknown round, and in case you don't know, the 8mm Remington Magnum is, I guess you would call it a full-length cartridge. You can see it sitting in the magazine well. And um, actually, I couldn't find 8mm Remington Magnum. It's become that unpopular, so I had to work with 7mm Shooting Times Westerner, which is the 8mm Remington Magnum necked down. So there was an obvious solution for me uh, by way of the 7mm Shooting Times Westerner. Um, as I showed the Patreon viewers, I bought those plates. There's one behind us. Uh, it's R500 or whatever steel. And I was shooting a number of rifles that day, including a Cape rifle, which you'll find really interesting. And two of the rounds from the eight millimeter uh, went right through at 100 yards, which is surprising. Whether it's three eighths inch or half inch, I don't know. But I was definitely surprised that the bullets punched right through. Um, but there are two purposes uh, to this video. One is to kind of reintroduce the cartridge, which I think has an excellent pressure profile, um, wonderful manageability. You need a long action, of course, and sometimes a long action op opened up, but I've always found the longer cartridges feed better and have a, a, a number of advantages many people disagree and that's a good thing. It's a belted cartridge, uh, essentially a 300 Holland and Holland. 
uh, but of course the shape is different, shoulder is different and so on. Wonderful round, especially these days where people are doing a lot of long range shooting. I'm surprised that they haven't uh, picked up the eight millimeter Remington Magnum. These no CMs sure do bite. Anyhow, we'll take a couple of shots um, with this rifle. And then I have another identical rifle, except it's Magna ported. And I thought it would be interesting for you to see the difference between a Magna ported rifle and a standard rifle. And I think we're shooting 180 grain, eight millimeters, so 0.323 bullets. And I'm not sure, maybe 3,200 or so, maybe maybe 3,500. I I don't remember, uh, but it's it's a significant long range round. And one of my favorite gun makers um, uh, got a Rocky Mountain like a, a goat at I forget how far it was. Anyway, it was a long way off. Not that that proves all that much, but it was a magnificent shot. I'll, I'll shoot this and then you'll see it at work. And hopefully our target stays put. It, it keeps blasting the target off the tree. Here we go. I'll set this one down and then um, come back with the magna ported one. So here's the identical rifle. Maybe it has a maybe it has a little bit better wood. And as you know, I leave the iron sights on. And there's the magna porting. And those are, you know, precision surgically cut openings to let gas out and to my way of thinking it's a far more elegant solution compared to the muzzle brakes that I've used and sometimes I pay a lot for muzzle brakes especially before I started this channel but um, you you can see for yourselves the magna ported version at work and there's no threading there's no real change to the barrel um, and, you know, it's a, a bombardment of electrons. You can read about it. I think it's EDM. Uh, but the company is Magnaport. Anyhow, we'll take a look at this one. Same, same ammo. I only loaded one round in this one. That's a remarkable difference. So with the with the magna porting, I have to say, I mean, you'll know better from watching, but to me as the shooter, it feels like there's no muzzle lift. Uh, and the recoil is dramatically less. You know, scientifically minded people study time curves and all the rest, and I'm sure the recoil may be similar but the perceived recoil is definitely for me it feels like half half the recoil and when you're launching something like the eight millimeter Remington Magnum can do um, it's uh, it's a it's a step substantial improvement all right well thanks for watching and um, take care until then see ya